Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to create our first Unity project, and then we're going to go briefly over all of the UI stuff that we're going to see whenever we open up the editor. So let's just go ahead and do this really fast. I'm going to create a new project by clicking on new in the Unity Hub here. And it's going to bring up the new project panel, and I get to name my project. I'll call it Unity 101 Intro, something like that. And the version that I want to use is, I have a few installed here, but I want to use the latest available version to me, which is 18 to 10 F1. My location's fine, and the template that I want to use is going to be 3D. What this is going to do is it's going to build the workspace to work in a 3D type of game. Now, it's very easy to change this back to 2D if you want to, um, but in this case, we're just going to be working in 3D, so that's fine. I'm going to click Create Project. Now, this is going to build our project for us, including everything it's going to need for us to make our game. And when you first open up the editor, open up our brand new project, this is what you should see. Now, if for some reason you don't, just go up to layout really fast here and go to default so we're on the same page and we can be talking about the same setup. So we have a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of panels, a lot of buttons, a lot of things happening, and it's probably pretty intimidating. But what I want to do is walk us quickly through some of the important things in a, in a brief way. And later on, we're going to cover most of the stuff in more depth and more detail when we're actually making our games and so on. So what I want to do, first of all, we we'll talk about the toolbar up here. This has some tools that we're going to be using throughout this course. We have the move tool, the transform uh, move tool, then we have the transform rotate, transform scale, and then a couple of other options that we'll get into a bit later on. What these allow us to do is simply manipulate and transform the objects in our game. And we'll talk about the, how that works here in the next lesson. And then out here we have the play, pause, and step buttons going to allow us to play the game and actually simulate the game in the editor pause the game so pause the execution of the game and then just step through one at a time and we'll talk a bit about that later on as well down to the left here we have the panel called the hierarchy now this is where everything in our scene in our level and whatever current level we have open will be so in this current scene that we have that it created by default which is stored inside of our scenes folder here we have a main camera game object and a directional light game object now these are objects if i go to my scene view here we can see the icons these are objects i'll be referring to them as game objects they're just that's just because they are actual objects in our game makes pretty pretty good sense the camera, and we'll talk about these later on as well whenever we're using them, but just quickly, the camera is what the player is going to see. You can see what it sees here. That's what the game view is. It's the camera view. The light is simply going to light the objects based on some settings, and we could do some fancy stuff with that. Uh, but for now, very basic lighting and a very basic camera. And we can select them using the hierarchy here. Pretty cool, but you're seeing over here to the right, whenever I select something, I have some stuff pop up. And what's happening, and this is called the inspector, what's happening is I am seeing individual items on each of these objects. And make note of that, on the light here, I have a light uh, item and a transform item. These are called components. In our games, in Unity itself, Every game object is made up of components. So a light, directional light, has a light component on it. A camera has a camera component on it and an audio component because the camera has to pick up audio so the player can hear you. They both, you'll notice, have a transform component on it. That's what makes a game object a game object. If it has a transform component, that means it physically exists in your world. That's because this gives it a position, a rotation, and a scale. And for an object to exist, that's all it needs in our engine here, in, in our actual system. So this makes up game objects. And we'll be creating our own components to define our specific, unique game objects whenever we're creating our game. And we'll go into more detail about this uh, later on, but you can just see there's a lot of stuff happening here and there's a lot of settings you can tweak and all that. But we'll get into that when it's time. Down here we have the project window. This is going to be where we can actually explore and look through our project files. So if I were to actually right click in here and go to show and explore or finder if you're on a Mac, this will give me the actual project folder. You know what, Unity 101 intro? 
assets. This is the asset folder here, and this is what we have in there. This is where we're going to store all of our resources. So our sprites or our models or our animations and our sounds, all that stuff. We're going to store those in our assets folder. That way we can reference them inside of our project. And you'll notice inside of the scenes folder, I have my sample scene here. Now this is already made for me with these objects in it. And then we have the console. Now this is where we're going to see um, if we want to print some information that the, same, that the game is outputting to ourselves. We wanna see like what is that value? I can go ahead and print that out and then we'll just log it in simple text format right here for us, just like you would get in a terminal or a command prompt, that kind of thing. And we'll be using this quite a bit throughout this course. So that's a lot to take in, but just to kind of get us going on this track, what I wanna do is talk a bit about uh, these panels, because you, you may want to make your own setup here, your own layout, and we can do just that. I have a couple of things that I like to do. You probably will figure out the things you like to do. So what we can do is we can actually grab these tabs here, and we can move these panels around and snap them into positions wherever we'd like. And if we don't have a snapping point like right here, I let go, I create a standalone window. And this can be placed, if I drag it off the screen here, it's on my other monitor, I can play over there. And I can bring it back. If I wanna put it back in the same position, I grab the tab again and just slide it right into position right where it was. Maybe I wanna take the game view and snap it off to the right side of the scene view there. So now I can see the scene view and the game view. That's pretty cool. And maybe I like this setup. What I could do to save this so I can always have this, I can go up to layout, I can go to save layout, and I can call it my layout. Now, anytime I want this layout, I simply go up here and I go down to my layout and it will transform it into this layout. Pretty cool. Maybe I wanna go back to the default one though. I can go back over to my layout here and go to default and there it is. So just in case you were to mess some stuff up and you have windows everywhere and you can't figure out how to get it back how you like it, just do that right there. Or you can go up to window, layouts, and you have the same options right here. And lastly, for this intro lesson here, let's talk a bit about what we actually have going on right here, right? We talked about the camera and, and the, and the, and the uh, light here, but this is the scene view. This is the everything that we can see in here is in this level. And to show you that, let me create a cube in my scene, in my level here, and we'll just work with that. I'll go right click, 3D object, cube, and there it is. You can see it in my scene view. And if I go to my game view, which is what the camera sees once again, you can see there's a cube there. Now it's not at a good angle, so we can't tell it's a cube. It looks like a square, but it's a cube. And if I wanted to have another look at this in the scene view, what I can do is I can hold down my middle mouse button and just click it down and drag, and that's gonna allow me to pan around. Pretty cool. If I were to click and drag, simply going to allow me to select multiple objects. Left click and drag, I can select using a box tool, multiple objects. Now if I right click and drag, this allows me to have a perspective look, like I'm a person with a head and I'm looking around. That's pretty cool. Now if I hold down shift and I were to pan around, it speeds up the panning so I can actually move with a multiplier, which is pretty cool. And using this, I can just kind of move around here, move around my cube, just like that. But that can be kind of annoying. So one thing I can do is I can right click and while I'm holding down this perspective view and I have that eyeball up, I notice to the bottom right of the eyeball, there's what looks like W, A, S, and D keys. So if I hit W, I kind of walk forward like you would in an FPS or a, a free look camera style system here. And I can just kind of walk around like I'm in the game world. It's gonna be very helpful. And Q and E will go up and down. It'll be very helpful designing levels so you can kind of get in those nooks and crannies and move stuff around. Now, we can also do this by selecting these tools up here, the uh, pan tool here, the hand tool, move it around just like that. And hitting Q, W, E, R, T, and Y will change what tool we have selected. So hitting Q will bring up the hand tool or we can just click the middle mouse button down. And currently our scene view is in perspective mode, which is the standard 3D mode. So if we're looking in real life and we're looking out, we see perspective lines on things, right? We can see things fading out into the horizon. We see how uh, our, our vision of the objects 
the size of the objects depends on the distance from us, what plane it is on from our view. And that's just how perspective view works. But there's another option here. If I were to click on this cube right here in the middle of this X, Y, and Z, if I were to click on that, it's going to change it to orthographic or isometric. And this is going to make every object, no matter what plane they're on from your viewport, the same size. They're going to appear to be on the same plane. So if I were to actually take another cube here, I'll make another cube by hitting Control D. And just for this case, I'm going to move this out. Now we'll talk about this later on, but just for this instance, I want to move this guy around just to show you what's happening. And we'll talk about transforming and moving and rotating and all that coming up in the next couple of lessons. But these guys are the same size. And they, they appear to be the same size here in isometric view. But if I switch back to perspective view, notice he appears to be quite far away now compared to this guy. And in fact, I can just move him further back. And the further it goes, the smaller it gets. That's just how 3D works. We know how that works, right? But what's interesting now, if I were to go back into isometric view and I were to pan up here, there it is. Let me zoom out by scroll wheel. That's how you zoom in and out, the scroll wheel. They appear to be the same size on the same plane. And I'll be using both of these to actually build our game over the upcoming lessons. That's going to be it for this introductory lesson, guys. In the next lesson, we're going to start transforming some objects. We're going to take the objects and move them around and learn how to position objects where we want them in our game world. That's the next lesson, guys. My name is Austin, and I will see you there.